Hello everyone, Preston here with another video on my channel Pralexart. Today we're going to be doing a quick tutorial about how to draw proportions and bodies because that's been asked of me a lot on not only my past YouTube tutorials but also my TikToks and things like that. So it's been kind of interesting to get those from people with me. So let's get drawing. Alrighty, so with everything that's going on, I wanted to give you guys the basic slowdown of how proportions work first on the basics of the body. This won't be into detail about muscles or anything, just basics, proportions of how the figure works. Now, with that, the first measurement that you guys should always have is the f first head. Now, a lot of people can switch this up between the head and the chest. This is just for studio purposes only right now. So this is one head size. This is what most people use in their illustrations. The only difference is, is how t many heads tall a person is going to be based on the medium that they're going for. Now, I personally like going for a 7.5 to 8 sized head body, you know? So that's usually what I normally do. But there are some places, specifically like modeling or costume design and things like that, they want to elongate the legs a little bit more so it's more of like 9 to 10 for them. But for me personally, I just do 7.5 to 8. So we're gonna quickly measure that out and I'll get right back to you guys after that is done. All right, so now that we have this whole situation going with the head shapes and the sizes going forward, we're gonna go back down to this base. Later, I'm gonna bring it back up so it's above the lines. We're gonna go over which each different level is. So let me go back down to number two, get those colors. So I'm gonna write in what each one of this is. So this is usually the skull slash head level. This is usually, um, depending on the style, I've seen some that this is where the chest ends right in the middle of the abdomen and or where the nipples are. So it's either lower chest, upper chest or nipples. Then this one is the navel or belly button. This one is the lower pelvis or crotch. And now this is where it gets to be a little bit more on the easier or freaky side for me because it I usually skip one of these heads because it's just faster for me to skip this a little bit more than it is for me to draw it out because usually I just skip this line right here I usually just skip this one because this is just the middle of the thigh but for this purposes and you'll know why in just a little bit I'm keeping this for this specifically. Usually right about here is the be just below the knee. So it's below the knee. And then here this big area is ankle and foot. Now I did this one specifically as a 7.5 head size just to make it a little easier because there is a little bit of difference that you could do. Most people are more accurately on the 8 side. Stylistically, I do 7.5 just to make it easier. Um, but I can add that little bit more just by showing this up. Transforming this, putting that there, and then going back here. And, oops, 
and just doing this. And there's the bottom of the character. That's their foot. If they're eight size, I might just do eight for this video just to help you guys understand a little bit more. So we're going to hide that again. So this whole area is ankle slash foot and calf area. Now, for specifically some little pointers, this is where the tips of the fingers are. And you'll see why in a bit. So we'll get to that in a second. Let's me just quickly. All right, so now I'm gonna be working on making everything the basic shapes, the ribs, the abdomens, the pelvis, the legs, calves, thighs, and so on. Just to remember that this is a way to boost up the speed and get things going. Try to remember to use big shapes and then go small. Another thing to remember is that the head is usually two heads thick. Depending on if it's male or female, it depends on if it's the length side or the width side. And as well as that hands are going to be also the size of three-fourths of the head or the size of the head because hands usually go from palm to fingertips to, is chin to hairline. So that's usually the proportions that you go by. I can help you out with figuring out proportions of that. One thing to also remember is that the navel and the elbows are usually at the same length in the body. As you can see right now, I'm starting to work on the base sketch for the body. I'm not gonna go into refinements, I'm just going into base proportions. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about what happens here in just a second and how to make things look a little bit more realistic. All right, so we are back. As you notice, I took off all of the measurements and things just to make sure that I saw everything correctly there for a second. But for the most part, this is an accurate depiction of proportions. Now, if you put this back on, put on the navel, just, just the different things. Now, this isn't a muscle accurate one. This is proportional accurate for specific, you know, body types and trying to understand and study how the figure works. Now, since I'm not going into too much of the muscles and everything, this is very much bare bones on what's going to happen. From here, you're gonna to need to start learning about the line of action stuff because we're gonna go into more of a figure drawing situation. But before we go into that, I want you guys to look a little closer at this and look at the quickness of the overlapping shapes because depending on the form, there's gonna be some overlapping shapes like right here where it goes from here with the deltoids versus the triceps and some of the biceps. So it's gonna go over a little bit and out. And we're gonna just draw the forward shape of the triceps. There you go. This is something that you should try practicing is overlapping shapes versus where they are compared to the other shapes. So now we're gonna start with getting the line of action going. So let me quickly get all that set up and we'll start moving from there. All right, so we're back. We got the layer just for the line of actions. We're gonna show you guys how we can put the relationship of shapes and the measurements that we have into action. Now, line of action is the easiest way to start a gesture drawing. And a gesture drawing is a quick and easy gesture or a quick sketch of the figure. Specifically on Google, it talks about how the gesture drawing is a type of drawing that prioritizes the flow of movement, resulting in a sketchy fluid lines with less defined shapes. Now, gesture drawing is the easiest way to get into drawing a figure fastest. This is gonna be the fastest way to get that movement moving and those gesture and very active poses going. And this is what I use as a way to form my gestures. 
So the obviously the basics of a gesture, there's two normal types of gesture drawings. There's the C shape or the S shape. Now, these are very just the basics. This, these are the definitions of those, but usually a C shape goes into one solid movement while the S shape goes into two fluid movements, kind of like a river, because we're all organic. We don't, we're not stiff like rocks. This is kind of what happens. So we're gonna just get some basic gesture drawings and I'll show you how different poses are going to have these gestures. So first off, we're going to do this with another layer and we're going to just make it based off of the chest just to make it easy for you guys to see that I can be flexible with both the chest and the head. You just need to understand the proportions on where things go. And gesture drawings can also help with the flow of, you know, not just the full body, but other aspects of it as well. So let me just quickly get the gesture of this character going and then we'll move on from there. So now we're back into the spot to actually show you a little bit more. So I gave the basic shapes for this. Gesture drawings are supposed to be loose, so I'm not trying to be too concerned about what's going on. I'm just trying to get the gesture down. You can work on the things being a little bit more solidified later, but this is just a sketch to help you understand how to create better movement. And you can actually see the movement right here. You see it actually keep with the flow right there. Now, if you look closely right here, I actually added some divots to give it some good different ways to give contrast to the flow. But I also broke up the image by making it, by drawing a separate leg going a different way that points directly to the head to make the composition focus on the head. Now this is just kind of the quick and easy way. You can actually get a lot of references from websites like Line of Action and a couple of others. I specifically use line of action in my own references that I've made with photos. So let's just quickly just draw up a few more gesture drawings and I will get right back to you guys and talk about them and show you the different ways to do gesture drawings and show what can happen with them, okay? Great, so now that I got this whole spiel done, we're gonna go in and talk about the different ways that these poses work. Now, specifically, I used the website lineofaction.com to check this out. This isn't sponsored, this is just a resource that I highly recommend. Now, most of these, even though I use that resource, it is a very much a random figure drawing, gesture drawing resource. Most of them are fairly C-shaped, you know, you can see the shapes going very strong, except for this one, which it was very an S shape. This one's very close to being a C or a light S, but you can actually tell the difference. Now, a lot of these, they were having a lot of overlapping shapes, except for this one. So it was a lot easier for me to just be like, here's the gesture. So let's go into a little bit of the details that I can give you. So again, I just kind of go in with the gestures and just throw them on. You can actually see this happening in my other full illustrations. But when you come to these other shapes, you can actually notice something. So one thing that you can actually see is that when you have the rib cage going very steep like this, you're gonna have the pelvis going very steep this way. And that is actually a natural behavior. The human spine goes like this. So this is the rib cage. 
or this is the pelvis, <laughs> and this is the rib cage. You see? And you can actually make that. So you can actually see this and add S shapes into these base C shapes that I made. You can actually see that right here. See, right there, going this way and going this way. Two different directions flowing to still be C shaped. And here's the cool thing. When you go into the S shape way, okay, with this one, where are the ribs and pelvises are going? The ribs are leaning forward, but the pelvis is leaning backwards, okay? So they're going the opposite direction still. So it's just kind of an interesting way, and this is actually what leans to people having counterposto like this one right here with the first one. It's very much a counterposto where the shoulders are in different positions than where the hips are going. And that is what humans do to balance ourselves. Okay, so this is very nice and key. Now that I showed you guys a little bit more about my process with gesture drawings and doing figure drawings studies, let me show you how I go about from going from start to finish, from the gesture to proportions and everything, all the way till a somewhat finished figure drawing. As you're going to be watching this, if you want to look more into the details of this, you can slow down the speed with the slow down 0.5 speed down below in the screen. But let me just quickly describe what's going on here. I am actually going to be using all of the methods that I talked about today, counterposto, figure drawing, line of action, basic shapes to smaller shapes, and as well as line art and overlapping shapes just to show that all of this can come and put out a decent figure drawing. I'm gonna do this for a couple of them, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to hit that like button, comment what you guys think or what other tutorials I should do in the future, or if I should do something more specific with the body, like hands again or even feet, and let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much, and I hope you guys all have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you next time. Bye.